Uh, but they shot over 50% from the field and made 10 threes. What was kind of the, the defensive uh, game plan going in and, and how did it kind of not work out? Yeah, I thought, I thought we played to the scouting report, Berman, as well as we have in a long time. Um, they have really, really good players. They have really good coaches. Um, we didn't want to get pulverized on the glass, and obviously we're deficient inside. So we were doing all that we could to protect the paint and make them shoot threes. And they made some, some contested threes, and that's what good players do. But um, instead of just getting completely demoralized in the paint, I thought that we played to the scouting report um, in regards to doing the best we could to keep it out of there. And if it went in there, trap. Well, when you trap, obviously somebody's open. And uh, I think they were prepared for that. And uh, they did fine. I mean, for, for us to get beat on the glass five, um, we shot the same number of shots they did. Um, single digit turnovers. I thought we managed the game in regards to time of possession and those things. I, I, I thought we did uh, well in a lot of ways. You talked about um, forcing them to shoot threes, trying to take away the paint. First six minutes of the second half, you keep it within five points, and then they hit went on a rampage. A twenty-one to six run, and, and hit a trio of threes on back to back to back possessions. And we didn't score during, when they hit that trio of threes. You're right. Missed ten of thirteen shots during that stretch. That's right. And I think I called. I know I called one time out. There was a media in there. Did I call two? Might have. I think maybe at the end of that yeah, run, yeah. I called the second one. How much did that kind of um, take the wind out of your sails at that point? Well, I wasn't hollering at our guys that they made those threes because, again, we were playing to the scouting report. And I think statistically, I know they shoot a lot of threes, but if you would have said you're going to protect the paint and more than 50% of their shots will come from three, are you okay with that? As long as we don't get beat on the backside glass off the miss, I, I, I would say I am. Um, there is a little bit of pick your poison. We're not going to be able to just play them straight up and go, who's better? The answer is they're better. And, uh, but you're right, that, that stretch right there, that, that hurt. Uh, third straight game, you're held under 55 points. What about their defense gave you, gave you trouble tonight, if anything? Well, we shot 46% from the floor. Um, I, I, I know I've said this to you a lot, Berman, and um, I've got to do a better job coaching this. Our points per possession tonight was one. Well, as a coach, that's what you want. So then how can we skew that number a little bit more? For us, with our team, the only way you can skew that number is to shoot free throws. And we, we, we shot five. So we need to do a better job of drawing distinguishable, non-comparative fouls. And I'm starting to like you, but like wherever you sit in the game, like when you see it, you go, that was a foul. That's what we gotta get better at. Because the only way we're, whatever we are, second in the league and three point percentage first or second in three-point attempts. I mean, they shot more threes than we did. Well, they shoot a lot of threes. I'm not trying to coach their team, but I'm saying we're going to shoot, you know, a fairly high percentage of threes. But somehow we've got to be able to manufacture some points at the free throw line. And I don't know when the last time we got in the bonus is. And... Uh, so I've got to figure out how to help that. And like, uh, I, think, I think two of those free throws came in the last five minutes of the game. So we got to get, I got, I got to probably need to hire a coach, another coach, help figure that out. This isn't redundant, but just with Barber and their two other perimeter guys are the top scorers, you still wanted to kind of not let them beat you inside or just give them their strength of their perimeter shooting, I guess. Can you kind of go into that a little bit more of what? Yeah, I think um, 
I think those three guys will play in the real league. I don't think they'll play in the D league. I think they'll play in the real NBA. But this is what I would say. So let's just, uh, let's do opposite of what we did. I, we're still gonna struggle to guard those three. Those three are still gonna probably shoot the same number of attempts that they always do. But if we don't have some sort of mentality to keep the ball out of the paint, then, it, then you would be asking me an opposite question because those monsters inside would just obliterate us. And so I, I, uh, I think it's a little bit of pick your poison. And uh, you know, they outscored us nine from the three. Uh, obviously you don't want that, but those three guys are really good players. When you're coaching, I know you weren't around for all these, but when you're coaching a team that's lost 18 straight true road games, how much does that kind of wear on the team's psyche after a while when you have to hit the road, you know, to Virginia and play at UK? Yeah, um, that was our third straight road game. And uh, we're the only team in the league that's played three straight road games twice. twice. And in each of those trips, we played one team coming off a of bye. That's pretty good. And um, if you're the opponent. I, I don't know that our body language, our psyche, whatever that means, um, our competitiveness, I thought it was really good tonight. They're better, but I can tell you that I'm very pleased with the effort of the kids that played and how they played and how hard they played. I thought the, I called that last time out, uh, four of my five timeouts were, hey, you guys get a drink of water. And I thought when I called that last time out, right there under six, I mean, they're tripping over their tongue, they're so tired. But I think it's because they're playing so hard and I also think it's because they care. And um, we can't control the schedule. We can't control what time we play. We can't control what channel it's on. We can't control the officials. And um, I gotta do a better job helping those guys control what they can control. And um, so the one thing that I mentioned to them after the game is I don't want anybody to give you anything because I'm not going to give you anything. And I'm uh, not trying to be a jerk. Nobody's giving me anything either. And so then the only choice is, instead of me giving an excuse for three road games in a row, instead of me talking about our roster or the freshmen, when I give an excuse, all that does is allow an 18, 20 year old kid to go, well, that's what coach said. So let's take all that stuff out. And the only choice when you're in the bottom of the ditch is to figure out how to get up. And the only way I know to do that is work. And I thought our guys worked. And uh, we may not win another one. And we may lose by 16. And uh, if this guy ever watches us play again, he'll say Tyus Jones, Quinn Cook and uh, pick somebody else from Duke, I'll tell you the answer, they're better. But man, if we'll just keep fighting, and I understand I'll be judged if we win, but at least when I'm old, we did the best we could. You, you know, you had been playing a lot of close games, these last three were not. Yep. Maybe that's because of the road, or is there something you need to do, you guys need to do better at to get back to those, those close games again? Yeah, that's a good question. Finally, you ask a good question, it kind of stunned me. <laughs> I know you're spending the night here because you're scared to drive back, but maybe that's why you're having good questions. They give you per diem, Roanoke Times give you per diem. Oh, you weren't buffing things, got the money. Oh, that's right, you told me that. Uh, six of our 14 games in league play have been one possession, and you're right. Um, 
down three at half at Miami, get beat 21 in the second half. Who we played before that? Clemson last weekend. I didn't think we, I, I thought that was the worst we played. And uh, I told the kids before that game, this will be a great learning experience. I think Brad Brownell is a top 10 coach in the country. He just doesn't talk about himself, so nobody talks about him. But he can really coach, and his team is always really, really tough. And so I told our team before we went on the floor, this would be a great opportunity because we want to be really tough. And I didn't think we matched their toughness at all. And I need to control my emotions better. I wasn't aware I got a technical at uh, Miami. And that, I, I think it threw our team off. And uh, I'll blame it on me. But we didn't compete the way we competed tonight. I thought we competed tonight. Did you have an issue with somebody behind the bench late in the game today? Um, and if so, what was that about? No, not, no. Uh, my daughter turned 13, so she's on the trip. And uh, I heard my wife's voice. Are you married? Yes. So, you know, it's like when you hear your wife's voice, you're like, I didn't do nothing wrong. And uh, I, I don't know exactly what transpired, so I just went to check on him. Coach, how happy are you with what the PNC did today? I'm glad he came out of his bad funk. The thing that we got to get to, I thought, I thought this was the best pace Devin's played with in a long time. Um, he needs to make more of his layups, and he will. But we got to get to the point where Bibbs is good, A stays where he's at, Devin plays with the pace that he played tonight, and we can get Malik back to what Malik was um, three games ago. But we haven't had all of that. And I don't know that all of that translates to winning a game. But Bibbs is a good player, and this is the best Bibbs has played in a while. So I'm glad he's a great kid, and he needed some, he needed some juice. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.